one last summer manga haul, folks. August 2023. Let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Manga Geekdom. Today we're going to go over all the cool stuff I got in the month of August. I'm sorry that this video came out so late, but I wanted to wait for all the August releases to get here. We're going to start it off here with Pokemon Adventures Black 2 and White 2, all four volumes. Like I mentioned before, I haven't read all of the Pokemon Adventures series, just the first couple of generations. Uh, Gen 5 here, never read it, so I'm excited to relive my memories of the the video games in manga format. I love the art and I love the spine designs for these books. I do have very fond memories of the original black and white game, but I never played black or white version two. And nowadays it's super expensive. So if you guys know where I can find a cheap copy or something not so expensive, let me know because I would really like to own version two. Speaking of Pokemon, I'm collecting a lot of Pokemon stuff, video games, merch, figures, stuff like that. I decided to create a little cube area in one of my displays strictly for Pokemon. And I was looking at it the other day, actually a couple weeks ago, but for the purposes of this video, a couple days ago, I was looking at it and thought, huh, aside from adventures, I should probably get other spin-off material when it comes to the manga side of things. Now, I'm not really interested in getting the Ash Ketchum stuff that adapts the movies and all that, but there are a couple things out there that I do want to get, and one is this very book right here, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Gin rescue team. This is a one and done book based on the Mystery Dungeon series, I believe the first set of games, and it follows our main character here as he finds out one day that when he wakes up, he is now in the body of a Torchic. So we follow his adventures communicating with the other Pokemon. I love the Mystery Dungeon games. I really do enjoy the art here by Makoto Mizubuchi, and yeah, happy to add this to my Pokemon shelf. But we're not done. Let's switch on over to Gen 6. Here we have Pokemon X and Y. I got the first three volumes. I found an eBay seller uh, give, practically giving these away for, I believe it was $10 for the first three plus shipping. Uh, the grand total was 14 something. And that is just a steal. After I got that, I decided, okay, I might as well add uh, four, five, and six to my upcoming September orders. So. Technically, you're not seeing it here, but spoilers, behind the scenes, I do have them already. <laughs> so I do have all of X and Y with me, and that is super awesome. Black and White 2, Mystery Dungeon, and of course, X and Y. Let's continue, since we're doing Viz books, right? Let's talk about Cat-Eyed Boy from Kazuo Umez, Volume 1. Cat-Eyed Boy, nobody likes him, nobody wants him. The demons don't want him, and the humans neither. So Cat-Eyed Boy is wandering out there, creeping everybody out, and being a menace to uh, yokai, ghost, and of course, regular humans. Kazuo Umez, I like some of his stuff, I gotta be honest, not everything, but I really do enjoy Cat-Eyed Boy. I love his take on the supernatural and yokai lore and all that stuff. So I was super excited when Viz announced that they were bringing back this series in deluxe hardcover. Large trim size, yes please. So it'll be collected in two hardcovers. Love the art on this book, fantastic build, and just amazing panels and just the drawings here from Umez are really nice to look at, sometimes grotesque but beautiful in a twisted way. If you're into this sort of thing, I highly recommend you add Cat-Eyed Boy to your collection. Finishing off another series, even though I don't get Shonen Jump books for my collection, simply because most of them are long-running series and I don't have room for them, I did pick up a Yashimon Volume 3, the final one. It's a shame that this series got cancelled. I think it had potential to keep going, but I'm happy to have a complete series on the shelf regardless. Rooster Fighter Volume 4. I love this series so much. So bombastic, so much fun. It knows what it's doing. It's a parody of action manga with kaiju and tokusatsu stuff. It backs up its ridiculousness with the amazing artwork. I highly recommend it. If you guys have not checked out Rooster Fighter, what are you waiting for? It's literally a rooster fighting against giant monsters invading Japan. How can you not want to pick that up? You'll love it. 
this is another manga that I totally forgot to own for so many years, and it's been out of stock pretty much everywhere. Of course, I'm talking here about Sandland from Akira Toriyama, one of my favorite non-Dragon Ball material that he did. And this one-off book is picking up steam and popularity because it's getting an anime movie adaptation and a video game adaptation as well. And if that's not enough, Japan's also releasing this book in a deluxe edition. Yes, I had to get it. And I looked everywhere and I couldn't find it. So I ended up grabbing it from, I believe it was a half price books online. And I was scared because it's an old book and I got it for like five bucks. And I said, this is going to be beat to hell when I get it. <laughs> but I'm ready for it because again, five bucks, I got nothing to lose. And to my surprise, as you're looking at it here, it looks great. This is practically brand new, and I am so happy to have this on my shelf. Now this next one, I debated if I really wanted to grab it, and it is of course Natsume's Book of Friends. Here we have volumes one and two, which were reprinted recently, and they've been in stock for a bit. And the reason I didn't jump on it is that the rest of the series is really hard to get. Some volumes are still available, but for the majority of it, you're gonna have a tough time. And I don't have stores where I can just go in and find, hey, a random volume of Natsume's Book of Friends. I love this series. I watched the anime adaptation of it, really enjoy it, and I wanted to own it because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm that guy, that manga guy that loves uh, Japanese folklore and yokai, and this, I think, is one of those essentials to own on your shelf. So at the end of the day, I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll get these two books just for the hell of it, even though I'm going to be frustrated because I won't be grabbing three, four, and five anytime soon. So I guess I'm putting this out there if you're watching this video let viz know that we need reprints of these books quicker I did get one art book, and that is Jojo's 6251. I don't know if that's the proper way to call it, but that's what I'm naming it, so there you go. From uh, Hirohiko Araki's World, uh, this is an art book from, I believe, only the first four parts of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, and I really wanted this. When it got solicited, I was really happy. When it came out, I totally forgot to grab it, because I'm, I'm not a huge on art books, simply because I I think I'm not gonna go back and revisit them as often as I would like compared to a regular manga volume where I can go back and reread it and enjoy the experience blah 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 but with this it's a little bit different the art is so good I love Araki's artwork even though I don't collect Jojo's Bizarre Adventure simply because I don't have room to grab such a long running series I did want to grab this I am I'm a fan of the manga I'm a fan of the anime I do have the anime on blu-ray and I, I just love that world so I think this is a happy medium for somebody that can't grab the original source material at least I can get this also so I did not know that this came with posters and I'm so happy about that. I don't know if I'm going to take them out, honestly, but I don't see myself displaying them, but you never know. Still really cool to have them. And I love just the art here on display from his earlier works and to see the progression of this wonderful artist. And of course, to read on the inspiration for uh, characters and the stand abilities and all that stuff. So yeah, I love that it's not just about the art, but it's about that world and the information in it. And I think it makes it uh, more valuable to keep in my collection. Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko Deluxe Edition Volume 3. Let's go. We got two more to go, if I remember correctly. And yeah, I also made a video on this on one of my reading vlogs, if you want to check it out. I love this series. I love the idea of it combining futuristic themes and uh, tropes and characters like an android, but scaling it back and giving us a very human story through the eyes of a non-human and her experiences with a world that is drastically different than ours. So yeah, lovely art too. I cannot recommend Yokohama Kaida Shikiko enough. Go pick it up if you can. Next up, we got Level 1 Demon Lord and One Room Hero Volume 5. I'm officially up to date. I could have gotten this many months ago, but since we only have five volumes and number six, I believe, comes out next year, I took my time with it and occasionally just added one of the volumes to an order. 
The Night Blooms Behind Castle Walls, Volume 3, the final volume. It's only a three volume set, really fun, really detailed, lovely artwork. And her story is going to be hard because she can't just become a knight. She has to start from the bottom as a squire and all the trials and tribulations that accompany that. So I do recommend it if you want a sort of a action historical fiction with a little bit of slice of life element to it. Don't Call It Mystery Volume 2. This has Volumes 3 and 4 in it. Of course, it's a two in one. I made a video on Volume 1 if you want to check it out. I was really proud of that one. I, I know it's not your typical manga geekdom video, but I really enjoyed making it. It's a short but sweet one if you want to check it out. I, I put a lot of passion into it. And if you guys are interested and you want me to cover this, I can sort of make it a series of like uh talking about don't call it mystery obviously if i were to do a second video it would be much more spoiler heavy and going into detail with the story and of course what happens here with uh, the second volume or i should say volumes three and four which are collected in this omnibus edition really nice build i love this series so much i love uh, totono and his inquisitive nature and the quirky situations and cases that he gets involved with the Valiant Must Fall Volume 2. Wow, Volume 1 came out, uh, I believe, at the start of the year. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a nice way to make a samurai story feel uh, refreshed, adding some new elements to it. The fact that the girl here is an immortal and the main character is kind of seeking a way to die until the two meet and that changes and they're on this quest that I won't necessarily spoil here but it reminded me a little bit of Blade of the Immortal obviously not as grandiose but there are some themes out there that are pretty similar. If you're looking for a different sort of samurai epic I would recommend The Valiant Must Fall. I do have a video for it on the channel if you're interested. From Yen Press we got Interspecies Reviewers Volume 8. I'm not ashamed of it. I thought the anime was hilarious. I really enjoyed it and it made me want to pick up the manga. To my surprise, the anime is much more risque than the original source material here, but I, 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 I do like it. I'm not gonna lie. I think if I were to look at my whole entire manga collection, this would be the only not safe for work thing I own. And it's not even that offensive. You know, you just see uh, some naked folk. That's it. <laughs> or naked creature people. I don't know what to say. It's interspecies reviewers. I can't even show you the entirety of the book. I have to censor this whole damn thing. But if, if, if you're into this sort of sex comedy thing with fantasy elements and all that, I think it's a pretty unique twist. Uh, obviously, it's for degenerates, but what are you going to do, you know? Toge Oni is the next one here. I really enjoy the premise for this. I haven't read it yet, but I am going to make a upcoming reading vlog, including a bunch of these books that I'm mentioning here and some others that I've missed. So look forward to that. I love the art on this and I like the fact that it's very primeval. It's set like what hundreds and thousands of years in the past with like the first civilizations. There are giant creatures and monsters and sacrifices. I, this is up my alley. I, I, do recommend it and the art on this is just exquisitely done in my opinion. Here we have the second hardcover for Old Boy. This is published by Distrito Manga. This is a Spanish edition, larger trim size, hardback edition, super cool hardcover to get. Unfortunately, not a lot of people are excited because it's in another language. If it were in English, everybody would be going crazy about this. I love the art on this. The larger trim size does wonders to this story. Really great build and the first hardcover I found at Walmart of all places, but the second one was available at Amazon for pre-order, so I jumped on it. The third one comes out December 2023. Of course, if you have this in, I assume, Latin America and Spain, it already came out. But yeah, if you speak Spanish, this is a great addition to own. We got some Kodansha books 
Here we have Battle Angel Alita, Last Order, Volume 16. I finally made it to the single releases. I previously got the Omnibus Editions, the first five, and to my surprise, Volume 17 is really hard to find. So I'm really bummed out about that. Some people have asked me in my Alita video that I did last year, like, hey, are you going to cover Last Order? I'm like, yes, I'm just waiting to get all of it. Uh, but yeah, I, I did start reading it and look forward to my thoughts on it on a separate video. But yeah, Last Order Volume 16 looking really wild here. Inspector Volume 14. Now, Inspector is pretty weird in that I don't have the full series. I started collecting the manga after what was the first season of the anime. So I have from 7 to 14 now, and I need 15 through 18 to be caught up with the Japanese releases. I don't know when I'm going to get the first six volumes because even though I love the show, I do think that is the weakest part of this franchise. And there's also the fact that two of the volumes, I think it's four and five, are horribly out of print for a while. They haven't come back. So I don't know when that's going to happen. But I got volume 14, so that that's awesome. Next up is Rent-A-Girlfriend volume 20. Now, I did like Rent-A-Girlfriend when it first started. I do recognize that it's... It's kind of a trashy series, honestly. Not the most beloved main character, but honestly, it's sort of a guilty pleasure at this point. And here we are with volume 20. This, I think this series should end. I, I think it's still being published. So just, just call it, my dude. Seriously. Sugumi Project Volume 2, continuing that series. We recently learned that it is ending in Japan, so I think it'll be around six volumes total, or maybe seven, I'm not too sure. And I, I'm i sad, but I'm happy because I don't have to worry about space. I, I can manage a six volume series. So yeah, Sugumi Project, really cool. If you like Hell's Paradise, it's like that, but in a modern futuristic setting, a lot more grimmer with like a Chimera Beast and and uh, the main human characters have uh, modern weapons and all that stuff. So yeah, if you like post-apocalyptic stories, this will be right up your alley. Go check it out, Sugumi Project. Finally, Paradise Kiss, the 20th anniversary edition. This is a manga that I've been wanting to get for at least 20 years now. <laughs> I, I remember when the anime of it came out and I really liked it. I thought it was cool. I like that at the time when I was reading and watching stuff, it was so different. Talking about fashion and romance and drama and all that stuff. As a kid, I'm like, whoa, anime can do that. That's so cool. They could, it can go that realm. So yeah, it always stuck in my head that I wanted to read it or watch the anime and 20 years passed and nothing. So recently I was looking through some eBay sellers uh, looking for old manga and I found this seller. I can't remember the name right now, but they had a bunch of books in great condition. I think maybe it's like overstock from a store and they were just selling it through eBay. But I found this uh, omnibus edition for Paradise Kiss for $16. I don't remember what the shipping was, but yeah, th this this is a steal. <laughs> I love the art on this, and I love uh, the story here. So yeah, I don't know if this is something that you guys want me to cover, but I'd be down to do like a retrospective take on, on a series like Paradise Kiss. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section. I'd be interested to find out. So that's the manga haul for August. And for the past two months, I have not done the anime portion because I was waiting to group everything together. And to my surprise, uh, it's still I, I'm still missing some stuff and I, I couldn't show everything. <laughs> but it's pretty big enough that I can show you this. You're looking at it right now, right? Edia Zerum, the animation. This is set between the two movies and it's an OVA of six episodes, I think. And uh, much beloved by everybody. I haven't seen it. I've I own the movies. Those are great but i've never seen the this uh anime version so i'm really excited to check it out urusei yatsura here is the first collection and the second collection i got the first two super happy about that discotech did a wonderful release here and i'm excited to own 
the Urusei Atsura series. After that, I guess I'll have to collect the movies. I'm, I'm in no rush, however. And uh, this is a series that I love. Lum is one of my favorite anime girls of all time. And unfortunately, I don't have the manga simply because I don't have the room for so many volumes. So this is a nice compromise where I can just safely store this with the rest of the anime and have a part of Urusei Atsura in my collection. So yeah, really happy about that. I'm excited for volume three, which comes out soon uh, by Halloween, I think. And uh, I think it'll be one other volume and we'll have the entirety of the anime. And then, like I said, I would have to start collecting the movies as well. Keeping it retro, here is Pokemon Indigo League the Champions Edition on Blu-ray for the first time, I should say. I really wanted to own this, and I found a seller on eBay that was uh, practically giving this away for, I think it was 50% off, and I jumped on it real quick. I really wanted to own this. I don't think I'm going to grab any more for uh, Pokemon, and this is going to sound weird, but I dislike the fact that, yes, we have the series that's great everything's collected but i don't like that it's just the dub release and yeah i grew up watching the dub but i really enjoy uh watching pokemon in japanese as well and i don't think we're ever gonna get that anytime soon but with season one it's so emblematic and it's what made me an anime fan because I was there for the big, the real big three, which were uh, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, and Pokemon. I watched all three back in the day when they first started on US airwaves. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. Here I am doing a YouTube thing talking about anime and manga so i at least wanted to own that first season i do maybe maybe i'll get uh the movies uh some of the movies just for fun but i don't plan on collecting any more than this who knows i don't know maybe if i find them for like dirt cheap oh, enough enough i'm fomoing myself into getting stuff that i don't need right now <laughs> let's move on <laughs> pokemon uh wonderful uh spectacular anime and here we have uh for the first time the uh first season remastered on uh, high definition re cutie honey complete collection this is the ova series from gainax and uh hideaki ano so yeah i'm not huge into cutie honey honestly but the creative team sold me on this and i hadn't watched this before so i knew i had to pick it up as a hideaki ano fan i wanted to have this on the shelf it's a little not safe for workish with the etchy uh fan surfacey stuff but it's all right you know it's no interspecies reviewers i'll tell you that much Project Echo 4, the final OVA movie. Beautifully remastered here by the folks at Discotech. Really awesome to have this. And uh, now that I have this, of course, they're going to announce like Project Echo Ultimate Collection, all four on one box set or something, because that's how things roll, right? Gunbusters, the complete OVA series. That's another classic that I really wanted to own. Finally have it. So cool of Discotech to get this license and, and remaster it uh, on Blu-ray. Looks fantastic. I think everybody should pick it up. Now for some retro stuff. You're looking at it here, the Tenchi Muyo. Here we are, 2023, and I'm collecting DVDs. Uh, this is the original OVA series, followed by Ryo Oki, which is the sequel OVA series. Uh, we have the Viridian collection for that from Funimation. The original I have here is the Ultimate Edition that was put out by Pioneer. Now, the reason I grab this instead of the Blu-ray is that the Blu-ray is a grail at this point. It is really expensive and out of print from Funimation. I was shocked by that. And from what I've looked online, there's not a demand to put this out on Blu-ray, unfortunately, or reprint it, I should say. So I don't think we're going to get that anytime soon. I was confident in my decision that I wanted to grab the DVDs. And you're probably wondering, why Tenchi? Well, I looked at my anime shelf and I realized that my goal with it was to have a little bit of everything, like the essentials, but also the stuff that I really love and that are near and dear to me. Like I mentioned with the big three, I have have some of Dragon Ball Z on DVD. I have Sailor Moon. Now I have Pokemon on Blu-ray. So I wanted to add more classic stuff from the 90s, which is when I jumped in uh, watching anime. And Tenchi Muyo was a huge part of that. 
So my goal is to collect all of Tenchi Muyo that is available on DVD and Blu-ray. So you're looking at the two OVA series here, followed by Tenchi in Tokyo and Tenchi Universe. These are Genion releases, complete collections, everything in one bundle. There were other, I think Funimation did DVD collections of these, but I got these for cheap. And I'm talking like less than 15 bucks compared to the Funimation stuff, which is still fetching the $30, $40 range. And I don't know. I don't, I didn't feel like spending that much on DVDs this year, but yeah, Tenchi in Tokyo, Tenchi universe, uh, spinoffs, alternate universes of, uh, the original Tenchi Muyo followed by the Tenchi Muyo movie collection. Now Funimation did put that out on Blu-ray, but again, it's, it's, it's sold out. It's out to print really expensive but i grabbed the genion dvd versions now what's cool about that is that you can get the three movies for real cheap i'm talking like less than 10 bucks each but they released this all in one or three in one set and it was a little bit pricier than that it, i think it was like regular retail price of like 20 something bucks but i thought it was worth it uh to grab all three in one go so yeah happy about that and moving on to the final piece here for this haul video to close it out, we got the second volume of Magical Project. This is uh, one of those alternate realities spinoffs with Sasami as a magical girl. Now, uh, I could only get volume two because volume one is pricier and uh, I'm still on the hunt for that. But I grabbed this for, I think it was $13 on a bid. I haven't bid on anything in ages, so I gave it a shot and won it. So yeah, you can see here comes with uh, some nice artwork, two discs, really lovely. So there you go. That was a long ass haul. I do apologize. I didn't think we were going to go on for so long, but a lot of interesting things that I'm a fan of and I cannot wait to talk about on the channel and some things that I am super happy to add to the collection. So yeah, phew, we're done. <laughs> Thank you everybody for tuning in. God bless. Stay safe out there. I truly do appreciate you liking, subscribing and, and, and being awesome as you are. I cannot uh, even begin to tell you how happy that makes me. And before I close out the video here, because I'm just rambling at this point, I do want to make a quick announcement because I haven't done my monthly Q&A video live streams I do want to make an announcement and it is that I made a discord server of my own so if you want to hang out with um, a wholesome crowd uh, laid-back fun individuals talking about manga video games anime movies TV all that nonsense uh, uh, promoting other uh, small content creators and all that uh, join my uh, discord server uh, the link is in the description I will also also add it to the comment section if you guys want to join. I would appreciate it. Pretty nice uh, little wholesome community that we're building there. So super happy about that. The Manga Geekdom Discord server. I didn't think we were going to make that happen, but I did. <laughs> so that's it for real now. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.